um, welcome everyone. My name is Ashley and I'm an advisor in the Faculty of Science. Um, and today I'm joined by Dr. Horace Long from Chemistry and he's going to be talking to us about the changes that are coming up in the chemistry program, as well as Trevor Lehman, who's a career consultant from Career Services and he's going to be talking a little bit about the careers in chemistry. Um, and I also have other advisors who are here today. Um, Kristen, Kathy, Leslie, Sydney, Linnea, and Kate is here, Christina's here, Robin's here, and I think I saw some new one advisors. Um, there is Tina and Liza. So thank you for everyone for joining us today. Um, before we do get started, just a few housekeeping. So please keep your microphone on mute. And we are recording this session so that we can post it so that you can view it again, or if anyone missed it, they can watch it and we're gonna be putting it onto the chemistry uh, website after this session. And we're gonna be doing some polls as the session goes along. So we ask that you just participate. So it gives us a chance to ask you some questions and get to know you and who this, you can kind of gear this session to. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the changes to the chemistry. We're gonna talk about careers in chemistry. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, you have achieved, and you can see that the poll has gone up. So if you can um, take this opportunity to fill in the polls as best you can as they reply to you. And then as we go through the session, I would ask that you um, keep your questions till the end of each section. So save your chemistry uh, questions for after um, Dr. Long has talked, and then we can, because um, you might get your questions answered as you go along. So, and submit them to the group chat and we'll have advisors and we'll kind of help and manage those at the end of each session. So how are we doing for polling here? Just wait, we probably have a lot of advisors who are not answering the polls, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna share the results. So um, a lot of, and Horace, can you see this on your screen? Can, yeah. Okay, so a lot of um, in U1 students and the majority of you are in your first year, awesome. And a lot of you are interested in a jigger program that requires chemistry courses. Okay, so that is actually um, my next slide is this session today is going to address chemistry programs specifically. So it's not going to talk about the other programs like biochemistry, genetics, microbiology, biological sciences. Uh, we are going to be offering a different session for those in the new year because those programs haven't been officially approved by Senate yet. So we can't share what those changes are to those programs. We're going to be talking about the new chemistry courses. So stay, you know, stay tuned for that. But we're going to then be talking specifically about the um, chemistry majors and honors and general degrees. Um, so if you're interested in programs such as genetics, micro, bio, biochem, and science, we will be offering sessions um, in January or February on the changes, how the chemistry changes will impact on those. And then if you're interested in other programs um, that have chemistry in them, things like dentistry and pharmacy, vet school, um, we are going to be, like, we do suggest that you connect with the advisor or the faculty um, or the school that you're interested in um, directly if you have questions about those programs and how the new chemistry courses will be incorporated into those. So if you're thinking about applying into dentistry, I think some of the programs are actually just in the process of kind of updating their bulletins and things like that with these new courses, but we do suggest that you go directly to things like the health sciences or environmental sciences to ask about those changes. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Horace to talk about the chemistry changes. Okie dokie. Uh, so maybe I'll share my screen here. Okay. Um, okay, and then go. Okay, so you should be able to see my PowerPoint here. Um, is that correct? I assume you can see this, okay. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Um, so I'm gonna go through and talk a bit about the uh, the new chemistry program and, and some of the courses that we're offering and uh, hopefully address some of your concerns. Um, 
And thanks for those who, who filled out the, uh, the, there was a questionnaire. Um, so I was able to get some of the questions and I'll address some of those today too. Okay, so basically in terms of the, uh, the new chemistry courses and this new program, in, in general, uh, what's happening is that we're taking a lot of our courses that have embedded labs and we're splitting them uh, to give you a lecture course and a lab course. Uh, so that's one part of it. Uh, as well, we're gonna introduce uh, two new lab courses. They're called the uh, Chem 3820, 3840. Uh, and these are called integrated labs. And the idea behind these two lab, lab courses uh, is that the students will get exposure to um, various areas of chemistry in one lab. Um, to kind of give you an example, like we, when you take my course, you, you take the organic chemistry lab. Uh, when you take um, uh, Dr. Kuse's lab, that's an analytical chemistry lab. So this integrated lab will have experiments which touch on these various areas in one course. And so uh, it, will, it will be interesting from the, from the perspective of uh, what sort of experiments can be conducted in that, in that course. Uh, so th those are two new, uh, brand new lab courses. Uh, for those who don't know, our chemistry program is accredited by the Canadian uh, Society of Chemistry or for Chemistry. And what that means is that it's a, it's a professional organization. And it, it, if, it's a, if a program is accredited, uh, that means that's recognized um, to meet some level of um, uh, academic standards. And so part of that, we have to demonstrate how many hours a, a major student and honor student would have in terms of a lab experience. And typically that's a minimum of 400 hours of, of hands-on lab activities. Um, so we have to maintain that uh, to stay accredited. Uh, just so you know, um, okay. So in, in case you're also wondering, like other, what are other universities doing? Are they, are they, do they have embedded lab programs? Do they have uh, separate lab programs? Uh, so what uh, this little table here is, we have uh, the U15, um, universities. U15 is a, um, a designation for these Canadian universities that have uh, the same amount of rigor in terms of research and, and, and teaching. And so you'll see we uh, have three different uh, courses, the intro chem, the biochem, the organic chem. And if you kind of look across the, uh, the tables here, you, you notice that, okay, many of the intro chem courses have embedded lab programs. Uh, some of them are separate. Um, and then once you get into biochemistry, every single one has a separate uh, lab course. It's not part of the, the real course, uh, the, the lecture course. And then for organic, it's a mix of some are embedded and some are separate. Um, so really it's, a, you know, across Canada, it's a, it's a mix of some are embedded and some are separate. Um, it depends on where you go. And there's advantages and disadvantages to both uh, methods, of course. Um, so... So, you know, why, why are we giving these, uh, these changes now? It, it sort of started about four or five, well, maybe five, six years ago um, when we did a curriculum review, we took a look at all the, uh, all the courses. And then we decided that, you know, one of the uh, um, complaints or thoughts is that many of our lab courses, when you, when you or any of the, the actual course, the lecture courses, when you do a lab, uh, it's worth, 15%, 20% your grade, but it's, it's a lot of work, right? Uh, so for those in first year, for those in organic and biochem, you, you, you know that experience. Um, so, you know, we wanna give students credit for the amount of work that they're putting in. And so we might as well separate that lab component out and create its own course, uh, make it worth three credit hours, two credit hours, uh, because students are putting in that time. Um, the other part is that, I, I, you know, if you're a student in first year, second year, uh, you probably experienced this. Like you try to get into a course, the lab section's full, but the lecture section isn't. So there's a capacity limitation there. So if we separate the labs and lectures, students then have an option of doing just the lab or just the lecture. Um, that gives a bit more flexibility and it, it allows students to, you know, get into these, uh, these courses, high demand courses in particular. Um, you know, in terms of scheduling flexibility, so then we don't have to worry about, oh, lectures and, and the lab sections coinciding. Uh, we could offer the, the lecture in the fall term and then the complementing lab in the winter. So there's no need to take both in the, in the same term. Um, and also in terms of 
if, if you've been through our lab program now or through the uh, various courses, uh, you'll, you'll, I mean, what you recognize is that every course will have about eight weeks or maybe 10 weeks of labs. And then, you know, you get into the next level. Let's say you go from organic two uh, or the 2000 level to organic three, the 3000 level. Uh, then you have about 12 weeks or 10 weeks of lab experience. Uh, and you sort of feel there's a little bit of a disconnection between your uh, second year experience and your third year experience. So by separating out the lab component, you, will, you should experience a much more uh, coherent lab program. So basically you do your second year lab in organic and then you do a third year lab in organic and you should be able to see a continuum of the uh, content we want you to, to learn and take away. Um, so that is one of the main features that we're, we're going to see. And I'm gonna show you what's gonna actually happen to the various uh, courses. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, what my little diagram here, uh, currently if I use organic uh, Chem 2210 and Chem 2220, you have a lab and lecture and that goes to a lab and lecture in 2220. And then in the fall of 2021, uh, you will no longer see that. You'll see there's a lecture course 20, 2100 and a, uh, another lecture 2110 and then a lab 2122. Um, so those would be three courses instead of two. So basically, as I, as I said, this all starts in the fall of 2021. That was a very common question in, in the uh, survey. Uh, when, you know, when does this start? Does it affect the summer session? So I'll talk a bit about that in, in a moment. Um, but yeah, so all these changes start as of fall 2021. Uh, many of your professors uh, would have shown you this uh, uh, slide or this picture. Um, I, I think it's, it's also posted on the website um, and the, uh, the advisors have also sent this out. Um, and basically what it's telling you is that in the present year, many of these paired courses, Chem 1310, 1300, 2210, 2220, Etc. So these are uh, um, paired courses, as we, as we call them. Uh, they become three courses in the future. So uh, uh, as an example here, if a student took 1300, only 1300 this year, uh, they, the equivalent of that would be Chem 1100. Um, and so if a student decided, okay, I'm not gonna take 1310 at all, well, then that means that they won't be able to get the credit for the 1110 and the lab course 1120. So what we were recommending is that um, if you're not certain whether you need to do the second one or not, uh, depending on what program you, you were in, um, we, we do recommend you take both paired courses and that gives you more options in the future, okay? Um, so if you did, let's say organic 2210, and 2220, then you get the equivalent of the, the, the two lectures, Chem 2100, 2110, and also the lab course uh, uh, credit as well. So then you can go into our, our, th our 3000 level uh, lab program and 3000 level lectures. Uh, not all uh, uh, faculties will want you to take both sets. So it is important that you, you uh, uh, talk with your various faculties if you're not in uh, science um, and to figure out okay, what it, what's required for your uh, uh, department or faculty. Okay. So in that particular picture, uh, it, it just showed you, okay, what, what the uh, uh, present uh, paired courses are and what the future trio courses are. Um, a little bit about the prereqs for these courses. Um, if I use the organic courses as an example first, uh, 21, 22, and then the 3000 level, 31, 20, um, the prereq would be the lower level course. Um, but what's also important to note is that uh, there is no prereq of the, the lecture, okay? So for example, a student could complete the first year, you know, 1300, 1310 equivalent, and then just go into the lab course. They don't need to do the lecture course uh, first. So it, it gives you a bit more flexibility in that, in that way. Um, and there is one exception and that's the um, instrumental chemistry. That's Chem 3520, so this last line here. Uh, so you need the, um, instrument, uh, the analytical chemistry lab and the analytical chemistry uh, uh, lecture 
and a co-rec or a prereq of the 3500, which is the um, um, lecture component of the instrumental chemistry. So in case like, you know, you're not familiar with all these terms, the instrumental and analytical and all that, these are all various areas in chemistry. Uh, so organic chemistry is one of the areas, uh, analytical chemistry is another area that's involved with uh, separating of compounds, the uh, quantification, figuring out how much uh, stuff there is in a, in a solution. Um, there's also biochemistry. Uh, there, so we have a separate program all for that. And then inorganic chemistry. So that's looking at chemistry of the non-carbon um, uh, compounds. Uh, and then instrumental chemistry, you're looking at instruments and how they work. Um, so you'll be, if you're a student in that course, then you'll be working in our MCAL facility, which is the uh, uh, Manitoba Chemical Analysis Laboratory. Uh, so you'll be analyzing some, uh, learning to analyze uh, samples using various instruments. So it's a pretty cool uh, uh, course if you, if you can take that. And then finally, this integrated lab, as I talked about before, um, is going to be a mix of all these various areas uh, of chemistry. Now, what you notice in terms of prereq, it, it's a bit more demanding than these various uh, single field courses. Um, so to get into this integrated lab, you're gonna need the equivalent of the organic lab. Um, you're gonna need the equivalent of the instrumental, or, or sorry, the analytical um, lab. And then you need nine credit hours of 2000 level uh, chemistry courses. Um, so we, we had that sort of prereq just to make sure students have enough background to be able to do things like extractions or recrystallizations or, or um, uh, use the spectrophotometers. Um, to make sure we, we have that, that uh, skill set there. Okay. Okay. So on our department website, we've put up um, the various you know, names of the new courses, the descriptions, and also the, the, the credit hours associated with these courses. So you may want to, you know, as you're picking courses for, let's say, next year, uh, keep that in mind. So not all the courses uh, in the, for the lab programs uh, will be the same in terms of credit hours. Um, so some of the labs, like the third year um, uh, organic lab, um, it's three credit hours here. Sorry, it's two credit hours. Uh, the, the lecture course is three credit hours. Um, there's a, a inorganic course that's two credit hours. The instrumental lab course, two credit hours. Um, so you want to be careful and keep that in mind as you're, as you're picking courses. If you work yourself down the list here, you'll see that there is one course that's four credit hours, and that's a, a, a 3,000 level biochem uh, lab course that's currently uh, um, sitting on to be approved. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll hear back uh, on this soon. Okay. So one of the other... Uh, um, Common questions I got early in the fall term, and I'll address this now, um, is in terms of uh, biochem, the present 2360 biochem, uh, students need a C plus in 1310 to take that course. Um, in the new biochem course, this Chem 2700, uh, students only need a C in 1310 or the equivalent uh, Chem 1110. So, you know, in some ways, if you if, uh, if a student achieved this, a C this year, they will be able to get into this Chem 2700 uh, in the fall term. Um, so don't they don't need to constantly upgrade uh, that grade? Just so you know. Okay, so this is a, a, a sort of a roadmap of all the new courses. It's it's it could be confusing. Um, I mean, I, I think. Generally, what, what you can see is, okay, in the first year, uh, you've got your 1100, uh, and that turns into 1110. Uh, there's a lab course associated with that, that's 1120. And there's, if a, if a student was in engineering, they would take the, an equivalent to 1120, and that's called 1122 and 1126 um, for, the, for their lab experience. Um, there's also an organic, a first year organic uh, course that I teach. Um, but for those who are interested in doing chemistry as, as their major, you won't be able to take that course. I mean, you can, but it, it's not of any use to you um, because it's not gonna be counted uh, for our course. Um, so then once you get into the 2000 level, that's when we start to divide out all these uh, areas that I was referring to. So we have analytical chemistry, we have inorganic, physical chemistry, 
organic chemistry and biochemistry. And so from an organic chemistry side, there's, there's two uh, lecture courses and a uh, lab, standalone lab. Um, for the biochemistry, there's uh, two lecture courses and a, a lab as well. Um, and then once you get into the 3000 level, you know, those sort of fields continue. So analytical chemistry becomes instrumental chemistry. Uh, so in, in, in analytical, you're learning about how to uh, quantify amounts of chemicals. And then in, in instrumental, then you actually use the instruments and, and uh, learn about the various techniques. Um, in inorganic, at the 2000 level, um, you basically just get a lecture experience. Once you get into the 3000 level, that's when you can actually get the lab experience. Uh, so that's 3320 and the uh, inorganic uh, lecture. So that's held at the 3000. For physical chemistry, same thing. There's at the 2000 level, there's no uh, physical chemistry uh, lab. That is taken at the 3000 level. So um, you would do a lecture and then get into this uh, uh, lab program in the third year. For the organic, uh, after taking your two organic lectures in, in second year, you can go into our third year uh, lecture, 3100. Uh, there is also a third year lab, okay? So you notice that, uh, you know, in, in the analytical case, you went from an analytical lab to an instrumental lab. Inorganic, there's only one lab course. Physical chemistry, there's only one lab course. Organic, there are actually two lab courses. Uh, there's a 2000 level and a 3000 level. Um, the integrated labs that are standalone, uh, as I said, there's a quite a bit of prerequisite requirements for this uh, first integrated lab. Um, and then the biochem labs. Um, so that four credit hour course will, four credit hour lab will require the, the uh, obviously the biochem lab, uh, 2000 level. Uh, and then there's a um, photo, uh, the uh, biophysical chemistry, uh, chem 3700. Uh, lecture course. Once you're past the 3000 level, you go into 4000 level, many of these courses that we see here in the green boxes, they're exactly the same as what's uh, being taught now. The course numbers might be slightly different, um, but the content is going to be the same. Um, and whether they're all you know, offered every year, uh, some of them are usually offered once every two years uh, because they're specialist courses. Um, so not all of them will be will be available. Um, the, the, the two uh, highlights or two key courses that we have at the 4000 level is this ACT called Advanced Chemical Techniques uh, 4610, it's six credit hours. And students get a chance to um, learn from the experts in these various fields. Uh, there's four uh, areas. And so one in one area, you'll hear uh, Dr. Craker talk about NMR. In another area, you'll hear um, uh, from uh, Dr. Kathy Goff, who will talk a bit about IR spectroscopy. And so it's, it's usually comprised of four components and taught by um, uh, people who have a lot of experience in certain chemical techniques. Um, so that's commonly known as ACT by our students. Uh, and then there's the research project, uh, CAM 4710. And so this is a, a chance for students to uh, work with a researcher to, to um, develop a little project. Uh, and it runs from September through and then present in uh, April um, and on, on their findings. And so this is a great course to get into because it gives you, you know, hands-on experience in a real research laboratory. Um, it also gives you a, a person to work with and then they could act as a, um, a reference uh, if you decide to do graduate studies. Um, so, you know, if you can, you know, you may want to consider that course. Okay. So, you know, as, as I mentioned in the, in the previous uh, slide here, with this slide, um, it's just important to understand what we're trying to tell you. Uh, so if you've taken any of the sequence course A uh, examples here, so if you did CHEM 2260, that's equivalent to the new uh, CHEM 2600, okay? Uh, only when you take CHEM 2290 is, does that unlock all three of these 2600, 3600, and 3620 uh, credits, okay? So if you only do the first sequence A, 
then you only get the trio course A equivalent, okay? So that, that's important to, to remember. Some of the courses that um, we didn't show in that table, uh, analytical chemistry being one, if you did analytical chem 2470, that's equivalent to the, uh, the new uh, lecture 2500 and the new lab for analytical chemistry 2520. Instrumental chemistry, uh, the presently Chem 3590, is will be equivalent to your um, Chem 3500 um, and 3520. So that's the lab. I actually haven't mentioned this, but anytime you see these lab courses and there's a 20 or 40, uh, that's typically a lab course. Okay, that's how we differentiate the tens and zeros from the 20s and 40s. Um, Chem 3390 is uh, structural transformations. It's a third year organic course, and that's equivalent to 3100, uh, which is the third year organic uh, lecture course. Uh, Chem 3580 is um, physical organic chemistry. Uh, and so there's a lab and lecture for that course. And so that's gonna be equivalent to uh, Chem 3120, which is the organic chemistry lab, or you can get three credit hours of, of chem credits. Um, so that's how that will be um, evaluated. So, so if you haven't checked out our uh, website, you can go to our, our, our website and then you'll see under undergraduate, there's a, a little link that says, you know, course and program uh, changes. Um, so if you click on that, it'll give you all this information. Um, so you just kind of have to figure out, okay, what, what information do you require? So it's things like what sort of um, courses do I need for these particular majors? Um, this little picture here is taken from the bottom of that page. So you can just scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, and on the left side, uh, I don't know if I have a picture of it. Oh, no. On the left side of that, of that page, you'll find uh, there's descriptions of the courses. There's uh, the names of the new courses. Um, and so, yeah, make sure you, you check out that site. There's uh, quite a bit of information there. Okay, so to talk a bit about our, our program. Um, so like Ashley mentioned early on, our biochemistry program will be uh, um, approved hopefully very soon, next few months. Uh, and then we'll give a presentation on that. Uh, in terms of chemistry, we'll talk a bit about these four uh, um, programs, the, uh, um, the general program, the um, joint physics, uh, and then the major and the honors. I'm not going to bore you too much with all the specifics here. And I know there's a lot of information here. Um, so basically, I'll just kind of go through them uh, quickly. And then if you have questions, like feel free to ask away at the end. Um, so this information is found on our, on our website as well, in case you're looking for it. Uh, so in terms of this general degree, uh, there's a three-year general and then a three-year general with a chemistry focus. Um, so the difference being that, okay, there's a bit more math requirement for, for the uh, uh, chemistry focus one. And then in terms of uh, chemistry commitments and, and, and courses, uh, it's, there's quite a bit more um, going into this focus. Uh, for the three-year general, uh, you'll see there says, it says six, six credit hours from these various courses in chemistry. And so if you remember what I said before, uh, when there's a 20, that's a lab course. So you're gonna need six credit hours of lab courses uh, for this three-year general. Um, and then that's a, a, a minimum number. Um, so I don't know if I have anything else to discuss for that part. Um, then once you get into something more specific, you can go into the major and the honors program. And so in terms of the major program, we have you know, these various first year requirements um, and in, in terms of the math, uh, uh, there's 1500, 1700 for the math courses. Uh, there's a little superscript three here, uh, and that's to represent that you can, there's other math courses you can take uh, that, that could fulfill that. Um, and then once you get into year two, uh, it, it's very structured in the sense that we, we expect students to take, uh, you know, all. The, all three lab, uh, organic chemistry courses, the two lectures in the lab. Uh, 2300 is the inorganic chemistry course. 2510 is the analytical chemistry course. 2520 is the lab course for analytical chem. Uh, 2600 is the physical chem course. So you've taken all the flavors of chemistry 
and 2720 is the biochem lab. Um, so you notice that there is no, you know, biochem lecture here. Uh, then once students get into the third, uh, third year, um, then you take the complementing organic chemistry lab and lecture, uh, the inorganic lab and lecture, the instrumental lab and lecture, and the uh, integrated labs, as well as the uh, physical chem lab and lecture. One of the things that I, I, I don't know if students are thinking about right now is that, you know, in your second year, there's two, three uh, lab courses. Then once you get into year three, <laughs> there's a lot more lab courses to take. So when, I'm, when we're working out the schedule for the year, we're gonna try and space out the, the, the lab courses so that they're not all bunched up in one single term. <laughs> uh, that, that would be pretty uh, uh, high workload. Um, so yeah, so that's something to, to keep in mind. And then once you get into the, the fourth year, then uh, Chem 4610, which is that ACT course, Advanced Chemical Techniques uh, course. Um, so yeah. Uh, so if, if for, for those students who are interested, there's a co-op program for this as well. Um, and so maybe Trevor or Ashley can, can talk a bit about what co-op opportunities there are uh, later. Um, and right, okay. And so if you're really interested in chemistry, we can, you know, you can do a, a, an honors degree. And so much of the first two years uh, are the same. Um, and then actually the first two, three years uh, are the same. And once you get to year four, uh, that's when it, you know, you have this additional um, research project uh, that, that's uh, required for that degree. Um, there's a bit more chemistry credit, um, uh, credit hours that's required for the honors degree. Um, so that we, we ensure that you have enough uh, chemistry experience. Um, now for some of you who have, um, presently been, let's say, doing two or three years already, um, you might have questions about things like, uh, oh, we'll talk about that in a second, sorry. Um, the other thing I was gonna mention is in terms of these year one, year two, year three, year four, these are sort of recommended uh, timelines. Some students may decide to do, you know, take a bit longer, uh, five years. Um, so, so it's really up to you to decide how, how you wanna pursue that. But this is, you know, when we plan out these programs, we want to make sure that a student can finish in four years. Um, so, and for those who are, you know, have a passion for chemistry and also a passion for physics and can't decide between the two, we have this joint honors program available. And so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of numbers here, a lot of courses, uh, but generally, yes, there's, uh, you have to take both chemistry and physics courses. Um, so they're all kind of laid out here. Um, and it is an honors uh, degree, so you will have to do a um, an honors project at the end. We keep on calling it an honors project. Really, it's a research project, um, and and so honors project is something that we used in the past in our in our uh, courses, but now at the University of Manitoba, it's called a research project. <laughs> um, okay, so so for many of you, uh, I think from the poll, from Ashley's poll there. Um, you're, you're in U1, so your first year of university. Uh, so next year you'll be starting year two. And if you decide to pursue chemistry, um, we sort of have this uh, uh, little um, requirement uh, of doing your organic courses, the inorganic, the physical, um, analytical chem, and then the biochem uh, lab, as I mentioned. So that more or less dictates your most of your uh, year two schedule. Um, then there's six credit hours of electives. Um, whatever you decide. Um, so if you're in going into uh, year three, so you're currently in year two, um, we're hoping you would have completed, you know, many of these uh, organic courses, phys chem, inorganic, uh, analytical uh, courses in biochem. And then by the time you go to year three, you can then focus in on the uh, organic lab and lecture, the um, uh, inorganic lab, the uh, inorganic lecture, and then the, um, these various uh, integrated labs and the instrumental labs. Um, so once you're, you know, let's say you're in year three now going to year four, it's, uh, it's gonna be on a case by case basis because it really depends on what you've uh, 
uh, checked off in, in terms of your courses. So you'll have to talk to an advisor to figure out um, what, what should you take next, okay? Um, so uh, I was just starting the sentence earlier about this, uh, the focus areas. So some of you who have started their, your, your chemistry degrees are considering focus areas. Um, one of the problems that we face is that uh, in those focus areas, there's defined courses that we, a student needs to take to get, let's say a uh, organic chemistry focus area or a um, biopharmaceutical first focus area. At times we can't, let's say we don't offer the course and then the student won't be able to check off the box and say they took a certain course. Uh, so we have to find a substitute for that course. So if you go back to any of these uh, uh, programs, they're, they're quite regimented in some ways. Um, and so basically we will be uh, removing the focus area in the new program. Um, so there, there is no worry about, okay, what do we substitute for this course that we don't offer? Um, so that will be uh, gone um, in the new program. Uh, so, so one of the common questions is what will happen to the uh, summer 2021? So we've presently put in a proposal to offer the six courses that we normally offer. So the first year uh, courses, Chem 1300, 1310, uh, the organic courses, 2210, 2220, and then the Biochem uh, 2360, 2370. Uh, so that's sort of like one last round of uh, opportunities, right? So if a student, let's say, did 1300 this fall term, don't do 1310 the winter, they at least have one more chance to do it in, in the summer, okay? Um, same with all these, uh, the biochem and the organic. One of the things that we wanna be careful of is, okay, let's say a student passes or fails the, um, uh, or passes the 2210, let's say, and then decide not to take 2220. So that would, you know, according to that, that image I showed you earlier, that would mean that they completed uh, course A of the pair, right? And so as a result, um, that would only give you one uh, course equivalent. Um, so, you know, make, make, uh, let's just emphasize if you're not going to chemistry, you're going to some other department, some other uh, faculty, make sure you check to see what courses you require, okay? Okay. So, you know, if you have any questions, like feel free to email me or I mean, uh, our advisors or science advisors know a lot, uh, so they can probably address your questions as well. Um, but that's my email there. You can find it on the website for chemistry. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's it for me. Um, hope I didn't go over time. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I can stop sharing this and then Trevor. Uh, I wonder if we could just see if there's any questions from students before we move on to Trevor's section, just about the chemistry changes. Okay. If there's any, I know um, Diana had a question, but Kristen answered her um, directly. Does anyone else have any questions they want to pop up in the chat? Unfortunately, I can't read the, I can't see a chat box. So. Oh, okay. We can, I can, we can tell you if something comes up. Okay. I'm not seeing anything come up right now. Um, okay, uh, Jasmine has a question. She says, hi, what does the gray arrow mean that connects the engineering students 1000 level in intro chem? Okay, uh, let me just go back to that there. I'm glad somebody's so observant. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, can, are you are screen sharing here? Is somebody screen sharing or no? No, okay. I've kind of lost my meeting control box. One second. Well, I can see your screen with the chart. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've got three monitors and sometimes that little uh, share screen thing goes on to the other one. Okay, so um, the little gray arrow. So basically, as I said, the um, if you're an engineering student, you have exclusive entry into this 1122 and 1126 uh, lab program. And so, um, normally, if it's, if it's a science student, you would be doing 1120 um, for the first year program. And so if it turns out that uh, an engineering student wanted to convert into a science student, 
uh, they basically have the equivalent of 1120. So that's what this gray arrow means. Uh, those engineering students can come in with the 1110 and they can get into our organic courses and all these other 2000 level courses. It's just, it's just to say that they are equivalent to our 1120 um, root students, okay? Okay, and Horace, another, Nora has a question is, do you get credit for the labs taken at St. Boniface? Um, yeah, for, uh, I think as long as there's an equivalent here. Um, so as an example, if you did the organic course at um, St. Boniface, that would be equivalent to our course, uh, let's say 22, R2210 would be their equivalent of uh, 20, I think 2211. Um, so there, there should be that equivalency. Hi, can I just speak up for a sec? It's Christine. Um, I mean, I wonder if we should just uh, clarify that question um, and explain that students and that St. Boniface may make some changes to their program, but for right now, they will still be offering courses as, for example, Chem uh, 2211, I think it is, or yeah, 2211, and then 2221. Students will only get six hours of credit if they have those courses. They won't be given um, the nine hours of credit. Mm -hmm. Um, but they would have the prerequisite to enter um, whatever um, requires the new organic um, two and the new organic two lab if they had the two courses from St. Boniface. Mm. Does that make sense, what I said? Yep. Thanks, Christine. You're welcome. I just thought I'd clarify in case, it, just so people knew it wouldn't be nine hours. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that's a, that's a common question too. Like, you know, when we show these equivalency charts, it's not that students get nine credit hours here, right? It's, it's, it's basically, okay, if you needed to take uh, 2210, the equivalent of 2100, 20, uh, you need these three uh, new courses or these two old courses. Uh, think of them as, okay, you, rather than thinking of uh, six credit hours here, and then that's nine credit hours with the new um system uh no you don't it, it's not that's not the case it's more of okay it unlocks you to to get to the next uh level of courses um, uh, okay um hi young says um if i took organic chem one can i take the lab section and second organic chem in the fall, or do I have to take the 2100 as well? Okay, so so if they took the organic one, so like 2210 right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they did that now, and then and then they wanted to do the, the lab in the fall? In fall 2021 and winter 22. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, yeah, unfortunately, if you didn't do the 2220 uh, in the winter of this year, um, then if you do require the lab uh, course 2122, you will have to take that. Um, and, and so, yeah, you will basically end story is th this is one of the unfortunate things. If you don't do both courses this year, uh, you will end up repeating some of that lab program uh, that you've done already. But the, but this they will you will get credit for the chem twenty one hundred the twenty two ten gives you the credit for the twenty one hundred so you don't they don't have to it's not required to retake twenty one hundred which is what I think the question yeah. was is yeah. that she wouldn't have to do the first lecture right yeah, yeah. okay and then I think there's a question about um, thirteen ten and thirteen twenty over the summer and the summer schedule is going to be released um, on November 18th at nine. So that should be up so you can see when those are offered. Of course, do you know if Chem 1320 is gonna be offered this summer? No, 1320 is only offered once a year and that's in the winter term. Okay, that answers that question, I think. I think that's all 
the questions right now. Oh, 1300 and 1310. Oh, sorry, he meant 1300 and 1310, Nathan. Um, yes, you'll be able to do both 1300 and 1310 in the summer of 2021. The way they're supposed to be offered, you can do one and then the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that should, should like the preliminary schedule should be up on the 18th. They've, they're putting that in right now. Mm -hmm. Awesome, okay. I think um, we'll stay around at the end for questions afterwards, but I'm going to turn it over to Trevor to talk about some careers in chemistry. All right. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you, Horace. Uh, Dr. Wong, I, I appreciate um, the uh, information there. I just want to make sure that everyone can see this. Everyone see this really cool cloud of colorful smoke? Yes. Can people see that? Okay, seeing thumbs up, excellent. All right, so welcome everyone. Well, appreciate you coming and spending your, your afternoon uh, with us. Um, my name is Trevor Lehman and I am a career consultant with Career Services. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what we do besides create cool PowerPoints. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about today about what our office generally addresses. We're gonna talk about some ways you can learn about careers in chemistry. We're going to talk a little bit about self-exploration, and then we're going to wrap up. Again, this isn't the same as we do with, we have whole workshops that cover a lot of these different areas, but this is going to be kind of in a nutshell what we do. So I'm going to present to you a question that you may have heard at some point in your life. You might have asked yourself this. You've probably been asked it by somebody else. What do you want to do when you graduate? What do you want to do with your future? And I like to highlight, my, my colleagues and I often refer to it as the dreaded question because um, uh, it's really tough to answer. And it's not that it's not something that's not worth considering. Of course, we want to think about our future, but it's a really big question. It's kind of like asking, like, what's the meaning of life? It's, 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 if you try to just answer it a, as a one-off sentence, it's really hard. So what we help you do at Career Services is we help you break that question down into more manageable pieces to figure out what your future is going to look like. Also, we acknowledge that career is a bit of an ongoing process and that even if you have an idea of what you're going to do, you're always going to be given more opportunities. If you decide you want to be a surgeon and you go and you become a surgeon, you might then be presented with the opportunity to be a unit manager of a hospital or teach a course. So we, we try to treat career as a lifelong process that consists of multiple opportunities, multiple jobs. So what does that mean for you, though? Well, we tend to find that there's sort of three reasons students often reach out to us for career planning. They also reach out to us for a resume, cover letter, and all that stuff. But for now, I just want to introduce that some students uh, who reach out maybe aren't sure. They just, they don't necessarily have a goal yet, and they're just, they're not quite sure where they want to go. Some students maybe have a plan, but they're holding it kind of tentatively, and they're saying, you know what, maybe there are other alternatives that I'm, I'm curious what else is out there, or what maybe is a backup plan I could look at. And some people say, you know what, I know what I want to do, but I'm, I want to know what's the best way, what's the fastest way to get there, or what's a way I can get there while also keeping other options open. No matter where you fall into that, you, we can assist you in this. And I want to start also by highlighting that your choice to take a chemistry course um, is already a decision in exploring your career. You, whether I see half of you are in, roughly half of you are in U1, so you know you've already chosen to take a chemistry course, you, and you're already exploring a little a bit about the world around you and about yourself. So one thing that we look at is we look at you kind of holistically. What courses are you taking? What are you doing for work? What is your volunteering? You know, what are the experiences in your life, and what do they tell you about yourself? So we often look at you know if you're in a course like chem, what are you enjoying about it? What do you find challenging? And what, and then paying attention to what you learn from those experiences and what type of skills you build. I also want to highlight that even outside of um, the Faculty of Science, that chemistry pervades a lot of other programs as well. Um, but, you know, agriculture, there are several programs within it that incorporate chemistry. Um, the health sciences programs incorporate chemistry courses into them. Engineering, environment, and as well as education, you know, teaching chemistry. So if you love chemistry, uh, we often use that as a great foundation, but we also build on it and say, what do you enjoy about it? And, and also expand kind of to look at the different ways in which you can incorporate chemistry into your work and life. So one thing I wanna take you here, through here is just a few quick resources that we use to kind of look at what's out there 
in terms of the world of chemistry. Because if you Google the word chemist, you're going to get probably several million re, re, um, hits. And it's, it's good that we, and we encourage people to do career research. But the challenge is that when you're just Googling, you're often going to get information that might be from the U.S. or a different country. It might be from a personal blog or an opinion piece. So we also really encourage when we do career research that we use critical thinking and that we really evaluate, is this information applied to me? Is this something that's useful in my situation, in the Manitoba or the Canadian context? Unless you're planning on traveling or working elsewhere, but um, we, we really try to encourage, and one thing we work with you on is finding career information that is directly applicable to you. So I'm gonna show you a few links. I also am going to attach a handout in the chat after my presentation that has these resources, but the first is our career compass, which is a resource that we uh, put together, and it's one of several compasses. We have one for most of the different deg bachelor degrees in the University of Manitoba. And it walks you through what the degree is about. This one, in this case, it's kind of grouped together, physics and chem, um, including I liked uh, Dr. Long, your discussion around two of the joint honors programs too that can combine some of these. But it walks you through different opportunities to explore your degree in, um, you know, uh, academically, from a work perspective, from a volunteer perspective, each year of your degree. And then it throws out a few sample jobs. Jobs that, you know, um, might, some of them may require additional education, such as the ones with the stars beside them, but also other ones that might be more related to having a bachelor's degree. Um, health and safety officers, um, technical writers, uh, different types of jobs. Now this is pharmaceutical sales representatives. Um, now this isn't something that um, would be a comprehensive list. There's thousands of jobs out here. But when people ask, what can you do with a degree? I sometimes point them to this just as a starting point to look at, okay, let's look at some other jobs that you know you can do. Now, let's say we see you a job like chemist. If you click it, it's actually going to take us to our occupational library, which is part of, and this is the second link I was going to talk about, are exploring occupations. This is the big library that we've put together um, for students that, um, oh, screen share. Ah, it's stuck on the career compass. My mistake. Sorry, my apologies to you. So this is, uh, I'll just do this quickly again. So the career compass is uh, uh, again that tool that we walks you through your degree, gives you examples of different students who went through it, what study areas of study you can do, as well as what you can do each year of your degree, as well as courses that are related. Um, and then at the end, it has these sample jobs. Um, now, if we want to learn more about a job say a forensic specialist, you can click on it and it's actually gonna take you to our occupational library, which is gonna show you a breakdown of the job, what it's all about, what do you do for this job? What, is the, what are some different examples of people who work in the field? What types of tasks do they do? As well as the education required, labor market, how much they get paid, job prospects, um, and associations and directories you can join. I want to highlight one here um, in particular for talking about chemistry. If we go back to this, and again, I'll have a handout that attaches to, that gives you a direct link to this, to our Explore Occupations page, which is this big library of career information that we've put together. And we try to put it together from a Manitoba perspective, so from a, and a Canadian perspective. So if you're a student in Manitoba studying, a, what, what do you need to know about this job? So if we go down here and we look at um, chemists and chemical technologists, you're going to get a summary of what the job's about. And you're going to get a section here on the occupational profile that really breaks down for you um, what the jobs are about, gives you different examples. Um, and what I want to highlight here specifically is something called the National Occupation Classification. This is like the phone book of job information or the big encyclopedia of job information that the Canadian government comes out with every five years. And they actually have a whole high, like, hierarchy and structure where they break down, okay, here are the jobs by category. So I can go to natural and applied sciences, 
or health occupations, different areas that we want to work in. And you can say, for example, professional occupations, um, physical sciences, chemist. And if you go all the way down, it's going to give you, again, a breakdown of the job. It's going to describe for you the duties. And this is really important. I always recommend reading through these duties just to get a sense of like, this is what the job actually involves. And kind of reading through that and seeing, does this kind of fit with what I, I envision this type of work? It gives you some idea of the degree requirements. And again, this is at a Canada-wide level. Different provinces may vary, and we can certainly have a discussion around that. But this gives you a way to kind of look at some of the main duties. Um, Another resource on this profile is something that's, these are always usually the ones at the top of the profile as well. There'll be a national occupation classification and there'll be one by ONET, which is a US website. But it does do a great job of showing you, you can actually search by knowledge areas and again by chemistry and it'll show you a range of jobs that incorporate chemistry knowledge into the work they do. Uh, again, we can go through this in more detail in one-on-one -on -one discussions, but I do want you to know that on most of our occupational profile pages, we're going to have um, ONET and national occupation come up early on, and they're going to be ways to really break down what this job is all about, what are the duties involved. Let's say, though, we wanted to learn more about chemistry and specifically, like, what types of jobs could there be? What, what What's a day in the life? For example, here's one by American Chemical Society called College to Career, where they actually break down example profiles. You can see people who work for the Coca-Cola company, for you know faculty members, for safety program managers, and it really breaks down for you what their job is, what their pathway was, someone who works at a children's hospital. Um, so you can get kind of a sense of what this job is all about, what different or what examples you can get different examples of careers based on different areas of work, environmental health, research and development, law and policy, military, um, and chemistry and the arts as well. So you can get these resources. I'll actually include this link directly in the, the chat um, if you're curious. It's one of many, but we and if you're interested in the environment, we have other resources. But I would, and it's giving me a little bit of trouble here, you know. Um, this would be one example. Um, and this more broadly is our occupational library. Um, okay. So that's just a quick sampling. Again, our, our um, workshops, will, our, our discussions can help you explore information that's relevant to you, but we really try to focus on giving you quality career information that can reflect kind of your in the Manitoba and the Canadian context, as well as more broadly, but we try to focus in by starting with what you need to know here. So you might come out from looking at that with like, well, there's a lot of jobs out there. Some of them directly more chemistry, like applied chemistry, um, whether it's like a material scientist or a, a lab manager, or it might be something like a, a project manager technical writer, maybe something that's a little bit, that uses knowledge of science, but in a different way, or uses knowledge of work more, some might work more with people, some maybe work more alone. Um, the second piece that we do in career services is beyond helping you learn about the world of work and what's out there. Sometimes then it's about trying to narrow it down. And at this point, we look at sort of four areas. We look at your subject preferences, your courses, what you're interested in, what you like, what you, what you don't like. We look at your interests, your values, and your personality. And none of these things are like the Harry Potter sorting hat that, you know, you take one assessment and it's like dental hygienist, 100%. But these can be puzzle pieces that can help narrow down what areas you want to learn more about and what types of jobs you want to explore. One very common assessment that we use is something called the, uh, the Holland Codes which is this colorful looking hexagon that looks vaguely like Settlers of Catan. And what it is, is it is um, an assessment that we use a lot with students. Uh, we won't go through it all today, but essentially it was created by a psychologist named John Holland. And he uh, basically focused on studying people who have been doing their jobs for several years and like their jobs. He said, what do they have in common? Like, what do lawyers have in common? What do chemists have in common? What do nurses have in common? And he said, well, there's these six theme areas, and we typically have all six of them within us. 
we typically have three that we naturally lean towards more strongly. It doesn't mean that you're going to be good at something or bad at something, but it means that all things considered, if you start looking at what you're interested in doing in your free time, at school, at work, you tend to have these at least three of these that are particularly strong. And what's helpful for this is sometimes this can be a way to give you more language to describe what types of things you enjoy. You know, are you someone who's realistic, who likes working hands-on, building things, tangible outcomes, things like the, the, the trades would be an example, but also things like dentistry and surgery, where you're, you're using your body and it's applied uh, sort of physical outcomes. Are you someone who's investigative, who's research-oriented, problem-solving, analytic, scientists, professors? Um, are you someone who's artistic and likes jobs with more than one right way to do things? Being creative, visual. Architects often fall into being realistic and artistic. They like building things, but they also like to make the building look interesting and expressive and have that visual aspect to it. Um, you also get things then working with people. Are you someone who enjoys helping others, teaching others, training or supporting or caring for others directly or in small groups? Enterprising, are you working with someone who, where you enjoy managing, leading, motivating others. It could be things like sales and market, pharmaceutical sales, um, or accounting at a hospital. Uh, it has some enterprising aspects to it. Um, but often um, with more working with people, but with more of a, a managing or influencing thing. So like law would be another example sometimes of people who they work with lots of people, but it's more uh, persuasion. Uh, and then conventional, people who are organized, detail-oriented. They like data. They have precise ways, they enjoy following step by step with detail oriented um, examples. Sometimes our math and computer science fall in here, accounting as well. And again, no one's just one of these, you're a combination of them. But if you're ever interested in the handout, I'll drop, the, it'll uh, include a link to doing a assessment for this. But we can certainly meet with you and talk to you more about these. Because after you take them, what's handy is that we can then look at other people who had the same um, other um, that people who typically scored in the same way, what types of jobs they're doing. And that can be a puzzle, a way to kind of explore other options if you're feeling kind of stuck. And I won't go through all the assessments, but we have assessments also that we look at what you value in your work, what do you want in your day-to-day -day job, and your personality. And we take all those puzzle pieces and then we overlap it with that career information we were talking about. And we look at what does the world need? What matters to you in the world? What do you want to be a part of? What type of issues do you want to work on? And how can we use your strengths and your interests and your preferences to overlap with that? That's kind of what we do. And we also, when it comes to job search, we also help you look at types of jobs. And we say, what are employers looking for? What do you possess right now? And how can we help you bridge that gap before you graduate? Or to build as many of these competencies as you can before, before you finish. So it's never too early or too late to come to career services. We work with you throughout your degree and for up to six months after graduation. And we uh, also help with job search, with resume, cover letter. We have a fantastic resume learning center. We run workshops every uh, month and interview prep. So if you have an interview coming up, uh, we can do a mock interview with you. We also have a Career Connect uh, where we run a number of workshops and events. And in fact, this month, this Career Month, so we are running just tons of events. We have a Career Cafe. We have a volunteer recruitment fair. We actually have an Eco Canada Fair, uh, which is going to be bringing a lot of employers and industry working in the environmental sector. So lots of different programs, lots of options. Uh, I really encourage you, no matter where you are in your degree, and this includes in master's and PhD as well. We work with students across the entire spectrum. Um, to, to reach out if you'd like to have a conversation. Uh, this is our contact information here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the handout as well. Um, but I, uh, and I, and it'll have our info, contact info as well. I'm going to put the handout on and then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, can I, can I share? Hmm. Doesn't look like I, that's unfortunate. Okay, so I did include in the links here the to both the made, the occupation profile and the career um, the career compasses. Um, my apologies, I thought I could uh, put that handout attached. Um, in any case, though, um, if you are interested in learning more, feel free to reach out to us. Um, 
and I will, uh, and feel free to reach out to us. You can call us, you can email us, and uh, do check out our website as well for, for additional information. I really appreciate your time today. I'm going to be around if you have questions as well. Awesome. Thank you, Trevor. Does anyone have any specific questions before Trevor before I just um, add a couple things about um, you and Machieve? Give you a minute to type here. Okay, it doesn't look like it. You can add it in and we can answer them at the end. Um, okay. So I'm just going I'm going to share my screen here. And then can you see my slideshow? I mean, there's no one on here. Can Robin Horace, can you see my slide the slideshow that you have achieved? Yes. Okay, good. I can, I'll get going here. Okay, so I want to touch on this quickly before I go, um, just quickly about UM Achieve. It's our degree audit system. So what it allows students to do is you can see what courses you have, what courses you need, and then figure out um, what courses that you need to take. And you can access UM Achieve through Jump. And um, So right now for the chemistry courses, we have our major and honors degrees in our co-op programs in um, UM Achieve as well as our general and our chemistry and physics honors course in UM Achieve. So you can run an audit or a what if audit if you're not in the program. Um, so if you're just thinking about it, it'll you could run the program and see what classes you need. Our new courses are not in the UM Achieve yet. So um, we will be putting those in before July 2021. So we hope to have those audits up soon. But right now you can run an audit and you can even go and refer to the website. And so you can kind of see what classes and how things would change or talk to an advisor and we can kind of help you work with that. Um, one question we get often when re students are using UM Achieve is a catalog term. What is your catalog term? So the catalog term is the term that you enter the program. So right now, if you're running a what if, or a, I think I want to get into chemistry program, you'd run a catalog term for fall 2020, because that's the most recent catalog term we have up there. Um, or it, ideally, you'd run want to run a fall 2021 if you were getting in for next term, but we just don't have that up yet because the new courses haven't been added into the system. Um, if you're in a current chemistry program, you're going to want to run a declared program and uh, your catalog term will automatically be populated from the term you enter the program and it will tell you what classes you have left to take. And so once the new courses are in there, the courses should um, be should be like if there's a new course replacement, they should be automatically kind of linked and substituted in. But there is some times where those things kind of don't work smoothly. So it's definitely good to know who your advisor is and I'll put some information at the end. So if you're running an audit and just doesn't look right, it definitely would get you to contact us. And this is just an example of what um, an audit looks like at the top. It really is just a visual representation of um, what classes you have. So this this example student doesn't have any courses in progress. The green classes are, um, are done. The red classes need to be done. And if you were any blue classes, that would be classes that are in progress that you're currently taking. So it's a really nice visual. And if you would scroll down on an actual degree audit, it would actually list the courses that you have taken and your grades and the classes you still need to take. And then this last slide is just our science advisors. So it's our contact information. So even though we aren't physically in the office, we're still available to help you. And if you're in U1, definitely contact U1 advisors. Um, we do, we're advising through phone and through email right now. So I'd encourage you to contact us that way. And that's all that I have for today. Thank you everyone for 
joining us. And thank you, Dr. Long and Trevor for um, 